Hey guys, Candace here again. <laughs> There's probably not generally going to be anyone else here unless Emily's joining us. So it's Chinese Elm Week and we are going to wrap up and finish the other three Chinese Elms today. Um, the one that took the longest work was obviously the windswept tree because that one needed to be wired out, which was awfully time consuming. So we have the other three Chinese elms that are being developed just using Clip and Grow at this point. And we should be able to work through all three of them today. Um, so funny is in the other video, I had mentioned that in a couple weeks, I would plan, it would be like the beginning of February. I generally bring my Chinese elms out of cold storage and I allow them to start budding out and growing because they do not need as much dormancy hours as the other varieties. And if you watch the fall physiology lecture, it does talk about that. Um, and that even our most, our, our trees that require winter, winter, um, they need 40 days of temps consistently between 32 to 40 degrees for winter dormancy. And we are almost at that with the cold frame. So, but I generally don't want to start bringing those trees out of cold dormancy until well into March, end of March. Um, the reason is, especially with the deciduous material, is they don't grow the best under those lights. Um, they're crappy lights in the cold room. Um, they're Amazon, you know, 30 to $50 lights. And it, I don't want to necessarily promote long leggy growth on some of those. So what makes the Chinese elms different is these ones that I have, you have to work really hard to get long leggy growth, long inner nodes, <laughs> big leaves. The windswept elm is actually genetically the tree out of this group, these Chinese elms, that genetically has the largest leaves in the group and the longest internodes. Um, this is the air layer that we did last year and separated it mid-June. Um, so this one, we did not do any pruning because all we wanted the tree to do for the remainder of the growing season last year and into the fall vascular growth spurt where we get extra root development, that's when our roots grow is in the fall. Um, the most. Obviously, they grow throughout the grow season, but they really expedite their growth during that fall season. Um, and we wanted as much canopy to bring in the nutrients, bring in the energy, and push the growth in our roots. So we did not touch anything up here, so it looks like a little bit of a hot mess. Um, oh my gosh, I'm a squirrel. But anyways, where I was going with the cold dormancy things is it was a few days ago that we brought back, brought down, I brought down all the Chinese elms because it's two flights upstairs to get to the cold room and we didn't get to the other three but I left them down here and just set them with some my other plants by the windows and I came home from a 16-hour shift there we go so we can see all of our new buds on this tree just starting to erupt and push. Literally just by moving from the cold room to the window a few days ago. All right, so last fall we focused on root development after separating this air layer. Um, Dave over at Dave's Bonsai has the root bases of these because they were beefy, you know, good size beefy chunks. And genetically, this tree is phenomenal. Its leaves are so tiny. Its internode space is so little. Um, and this is a tree that we're going to repot now this spring. It's not ready to repot yet, but it's going to be very shortly. Um, this is a very good time to revisit that spring lecture and I will link it in the description box below. But 
each tree is treated as an individual. These buds have started to grow and swell, but they have not yet reached kind of that peak swollen point. So the optimal time when we are going to jump in and repot this is going to be once those buds have swollen and have not yet started to open. Because what that tells us is that they stored energy in the root that we worked so hard to build up last year for this vigorous spring push has now been moved up into the tree. Now, if we go in and we do repotting too early, if we're doing root work and that energy, those stored vacuoles from the fall, revisit the fall physiology lecture, if you don't know what I'm talking about. If we go in and do that root work before these have reached prime plumpness, we are shorting all of that work we put into getting that vigorous growth spurt, that big energy push, and that big, amazing spring growth and starting a successful growth season this year. Because we're going to then go in and reduce our roots and we're going to be removing those energy storage vacuoles while they're still filled with the energy because the tree hasn't gotten it yet. So here's the other thing that I've noticed these had woken up quite quickly after just being out of the cold room a few days ago is that that day I watered these trees heavily and within two days these trees were dry. Now in the cold room I generally don't have to water for 10 to 14 days depends on the tree. Um, that is our number one indicator that the tree is waking up because it is now starting to move water from the rooting system up through the vascular system because the water consumption we see then start to go up. Um, so let's get in and let's get some of this canopy back into space. Now it's going to look a little goofy at this point. This is one that's very early now entering that ramification, you know, phase. I have it set on a rock here. This is my perceived front. This is probably going to be the potting angle. We couldn't angle it correctly when we potted the air layer last year because when we separate an air layer, we don't mess with the roots. We take that whole bundle and we put it in a pot big enough to encompass it and we say, go to town, keep going. Um, and that is how the root bundle fit in here. So I have it angled, so we're making these decisions based on what the angle will be in the new pot this spring. Um, so I am going through, I'm picking ceramics, making sure I have ceramics um, for the trees that do need to be repotted if they're going to a new container. Um, sometimes they're not going to a new container, they just need the root work and go back into the same container. Um, but a lot of this will be, this is elongated growth from last year and we, need to cut it back. So it's going to look patchy because this is that phase as we're going into the refinement stage where we're building all that fullness within the camp canopy using the small, doing the small twigging. Um, we want to cut back all of these long shoots and start working on building that fine ramification throughout it. And that's what will fill in then our canopy. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom here and some of these don't need necessarily cut, cut. Don't necessarily need to be cut, um, but just like before, I'll look and see, do we need any? That one's good. Um, directional pruning, but we don't want these pieces here to be too long because we're always looking to develop the finer and finer and finer twigging and ramification and structure. That will be our first. I'm probably gonna take this one all the way back. Um, so what you need to be doing this year, this year, this time of year, is go through and look at your deciduous or semi-deciduous <laughs> material and make a plan for it. Um, do you need to, you know, cut back and develop further compactness and ramification within the canopy? Is there branches that you need to tell yourself this branch needs to thicken in where relation it is in the tree? And I need to remember I'm going to hands off a specific branch and let it run as long as it wants this grow season in order to thicken and keep everything else cut back. 
um, go through and see what, you know, what do, what do your trees need? But all right, I'm going to go into fast mode, caffeinated mode, and I'm going to work through bringing this structure back here. And then we're going to talk about my ceramics I've chosen. All right, so the pruning of the structures that we allowed to elongate last year has been cut back to continue with just developing finer ramification and, and branching within this tree. Um, so this will probably, so far this is how I'm being developed, how I'm being developed, how I'm developing it as the front. We may do some work on this branch later. And we may pull this one down with a guide wire a bit. But so there's a couple pots I've looked at. This is actually my second choice, but this is a Steve Gossert pot. Yep, pretty sure. Small round. but I don't think the color offsets enough. I think if anything, it kind of blends too much. And this is a little itty bitty tree. You know, I've got itty bitty wee hands. And it's about the size of my hand. Um, so smaller pot, smaller pots, smaller trees, can really take, especially deciduous, <clears throat> a brighter or more shiny glaze, um, more vibrant colors, just to make them pop a little more. Otherwise, the little trees do get drowned out if you're gonna do any type of showing or exhibition with all those massive trees that I don't like if I can't carry by myself, so, because <laughs> I have to carry it by myself. But it's hard to pick up, but this is a reddish brown, high shine glaze with a nice blue Lip, I think this was a end of coin. Yeah, I'd have to look back to be sure, but because it almost looks still like a, it looks like a Steve Gossert, but that's not his chop, unless it was when he switched to his newer chop, but I'll check it back in my records. But I think this darker reddish, blue high shine and it's the pot is a lot smaller I think would look nice with this tree the nice thing about pots it's not a marriage contract we can change it any spring but I think that's the plan so that's it for the little Chinese elm here I'm gonna grab the big one all right, so this is my bigger Chinese elm. Again, this one we're now starting to work on the tertiary growth development and ramification. Um, if you've been here for a hot minute, um, we did a thorough pruning and worked the structure while it was in leaf this last summer. So if you go to the Chinese elm playlist, you can see that work. Um, when we talk about setting goals with our trees and we're looking at a deciduous or semi-deciduous tree and saying, what do we need to do? Um, so this year, the goal is we have our primary structures. We have already set, we have our secondary branching. And we, at this time, then will be cutting back growth, removing new unwanted growth to develop that thickness and that fine twigging. Um, when we look at this tree as a whole, this probably isn't my front. It's in a round, nice round pot. It's a nice textured, really fits this tree well. Does not need to be repotted this year. We repotted this one last year. And I don't know if it was we, it could have been before we developed this relationship. Um, <laughs> I think, see this one, the canopy leans forward towards the viewer. It's hard to see because we're looking at a winter silhouette. Um, but the base leans backwards, so this is also a very doable front. 
Um, what we need to do is prune back the top to keep this ramification and this growth very fine because this is the youngest growth to be represented on the tree. What I need to remember though is I am hands offing this section right below. So we have our apex growth here that's going to be very fine and cut back. And we're also going to do the same to this layer, but this area in between, we need to let that elongate this season and lengthen some. So we're gonna let we're gonna let that be. So as I work through the tree, I have to be very careful that I start here, I come to about here, I stop, and then I jump down because right now when this is in leaf, it looks like a ball here because we don't have enough length discrepancy, a good discrepancy between this part to this part. And you can see that a little bit in the winter silhouette here. So this is a, was a fairly cheap commercial bonsai tree. Standard S-curve, not my favorite, but I'm really digging how I've brought forth the development and the branching as a tree I've been able to learn on. So learn on trees like this. You don't want to go out and buy a finished showpiece and then as your first pruning exercises. So I'm actually just going to start at the bottom here. I'm going to go into fast mode and just do some fine work in here for anything. But most of this is just, just like the other one, we may be cutting back some areas. The branches, this tree is much larger. So where we cut back is going to be in proportion to this tree. Um, it's not necessarily standardized. So let's go into caffeinated mode for this one. I think I forget to forgot to hit go in the caffeinated mode, but I have cut back up here. I have reduced back much of the growth along this area so we can get further branching and ramification and fill in fill in the tree so it looks like a full tree. Um, also, I removed any areas that were gonna be causing issues. Chinese elms like to put out clusters of bor branches and growth. It's okay when we're building an apex, but if you have a cluster of five coming off of a branch, it's going to start causing undue thickness and then you're gonna lose the um, your taper and kind of just the delicacy within those branches. It's just not appealing to see like a large bulge in your branching. But, all right. So this one is just starting to also push its butts, but it does not need to get repotted this year. And all right, that's it for this tree then. Let's go grab the redheaded stepchild from New Zealand. <laughs> Commercially purchased, belonged to my middle daughter who takes no, um, interest other than claiming it. So this tree came to me also as a commercially sold tree for her to use and play with. It is budding out. I foresee this tree is going to have an amazingly successful growth season after being rehabbed last year. Um, when I purchased it, it had embedded wire strangulating some areas down here there might be a piece of wire still embedded in one spot that I just can't get out. Um, it wasn't healthy, it had its issues. So last year we just rehabbed and let it grow and didn't do anything. And the way this is budding out, it's gonna be an amazing, having an amazing season. But we are going to repot this tree this spring. Not because there's anything wrong with this pot. This is a end of coin 
very, very, very pretty pot. But because this is one of the trees that I'll be parting with this year, um, I just, I don't have a need for it in my collection. I mean, I thought of just like chopping it and letting it go, but I've got so many other trees at this point to work with and projects that I'm going to be starting with new trees and such that I don't need four of these Chinese elms. And obviously the other three have way more potential and way more that we get to do with it. So I am going to repot this because when I bring it to auction, this tree is probably a value $30. I, I don't know, but nobody's going to pay for the pot worth because the pot worth far exceeds the tree. So when we're selling a tree or taking it to an auction or whatnot, you want to make sure that your frame, the pot, matches what you're trying to sell here. So I could say, I want $125 for this. And nobody's going to see this because all of they're going to be looking at is this. So it will be removed from this pot, placed into a plastic training pot to continue to recover and grow and do its pre bonsai things with a new friend, new owner. And then be equitably priced at that $35, $45 range. So I'm not, I don't want to do any too many trims or cuts on it. I, gosh, it's, the amount of buds on this is absolutely redonkulous, completely redonkulous. And there was a wire that was here, but it's all steel, but I don't even know if you can see, but the amount and how close they are. But I would say, I don't know, if I were to keep this tree, I, I don't know, I think I would air layer it somewhere way up here. Remove, remove, and then develop this part. But yeah, I don't think I'm actually gonna do anything with this tree. So just thought I'd bring it down in case we had some work, but if it's going to be sold, I will give the new owner a tree with things to work on um, and some pruning decisions to make and let it flush out this spring in all of its glory. So this tree will be repotted. I don't need to, it's gonna free up a ceramic and it's gonna go into a training pot. So it's probably the last time we'll see this tree. But all right, I hope you guys are having fun. Thank you for joining me for Chinese Elm Week. <laughs> um, next up on the chopping block, I, I need to do some wiring on a boxwood. Yeah, that's next up on the list. So I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. As always, if you have questions or trees you want us to look at and talk about, you can shoot them to my email at ccmso12 at yahoo.com. Thank you.